Hello, my name is Prandef, and this is a meta episode of Minus Micro. Today I'm going to address the previous episodes that I have made and some criticisms that have been made about them and some mistakes that I have made in them. The first episode on probe bodyguards has been noted to be perhaps unrealistic. Uh, I don't entirely disagree. Quite often the Zerg will just refuse to engage into you, but this is better to have the Zerg not engage into you than to have the Zerg engage into you and kill all your probes. Uh, this will often allow you to buy time for an adept to finish, and once your adept finishes, then you're fine. Uh, also, it's perhaps noteworthy that most of the time you won't be in a situation where this matters if you have handled the early pool defense properly. But if you maybe go Nexus first and scout late, which is, I think, greedy, but it, you can do it. Um, or if you just botch the early pool defense, then this can be relevant. Also, this episode was primarily made just to be eye-catching and demonstrate something that would be generally considered impossible and show that it is possible to do. Episode 2 on Prism Chasing is perhaps the most discussed episode I've made, and there are some perhaps more efficient ways to do prism chasing than the method that I demonstrate in the video. Um, the, there have been a couple specific uh, suggestions made. Um, one is to hotkey the units that you are uh, chasing with, and that allows you to use a much more efficient method. The reason I don't demonstrate this in the video is because quite often you don't have the leisure to hotkey the units you want to chase with. Um, for example, if you're defending a rush attack from a Zerg uh, and you wholly attack off in their retreats, and then you just immediately just grab whichever two mortals are nearby and chase with your warp prism, you usually don't have the luxury of hotkeying those two immortals. You just pick them up and go chase and kill whatever you can. Uh, the other uh, suggestion has been to use an entirely different technique in which you onload both immortals and then you select both immortals with a box, right click in the prism to pick them up, and then onload the prism again. This is a superior technique for chasing, but the reason I did not demonstrate this one is because it does not generalize to kiting with the prism. And yeah, perhaps I should have made two separate episodes, one for chasing, one for kiting, but Instead, I just made one episode, which has a technique that can be applied to both. So the technique I show in the video can be used for kiting with an Archon drop against Zerglings, for example, uh, and it can also be used for chasing with the Mortals against Roaches. Um, episode 3, not much to note there. Some people have pointed out that there are a few other ways to dodge mine shots that I did not include in the video. I don't think I technically said that it was an exhaustive list, though it was intended to be, um, and I simply missed a couple, but nothing was wrong in the episode. Forming Concaves, I think, was a good episode. Flexible Focus Fire was good. Target Fire Kiting was good. Episode 7 was probably the worst episode I've made, and the reason for this is that uh, I haven't, I haven't actually attempted to use this technique in an actual game before making the, the episode. Um, the Musuro, we were talking about pinging structures and the Musuro noted that you can use it to see what something is and I was like that's a brilliant idea let me go make an episode on that. Unfortunately I didn't test this thoroughly enough and it turns out that it will only display the name of the structure if you have vision of the center of it. Uh, you can select it if you have vision of just the edge, but in order for pinging to work, you need to have vision of the center. And this, if I at least noted this in the video, it would have been fine, but I didn't because I wasn't even aware of it. And that makes it a very misleading video, and my apologies for that. There are still merits to scouting with pings, and I still do it occasionally, uh, but you have to be aware of that caveat. And if you do have vision of the center of the building, then the benefits I mentioned in the video do apply. But if you're mistaken and you don't have vision of the center, 
then you may have just missed your opportunity to click on the building. So it, it has to be done much more carefully than I surmised when I was making the video. Um, worker tanking is a fine video, short range kiting is fine, shifty select kiting is fine, though people have suggested it may not be particularly useful. Uh, I guess it's a contextual thing because I use it a lot in my games. Corner kiting is fine, aggressive setter zip is fine, blink sniping is fine, focus fire is fine, uh, hold position harass. I perhaps didn't explain it well enough in the video, but there's nothing wrong in it. Mind dropping. Now, this is an interesting one. Mind dropping, I use a technique that I saw a pro use. I don't remember which pro it was. I think it was maybe Beyond on one of his streams. Um, or maybe it was Innovation. Uh, so one of those. It, it, was, it was some pro Terran that was streaming, and I copied the technique that they used and made a video on it. Um, someone in the comments noted that it is much easier to do this if you hotkey the mines. Unlike prism chasing, you will always be doing this um, as a premeditative maneuver. So you have the freedom to hotkey the, the mines, and as long as you have a free hotkey available, there's no reason that you can't do this. It makes the technique a lot easier to use if you hotkey the mines, because the hard part is selecting them once they're dropped. So if you just hockey the mines, then it's very easy to do. I don't know why the pros didn't do this in the stream video VODs that I was looking at, but I don't see any actual disadvantage to hotkeying the mines. Um, so that was perhaps not the best episode ever because it gave a very suboptimal um, technique. So someone does describe the correct technique in the comments and that was um, to use the hotkeyed mines. Uh, pullback micro was fine, bunker versus spine was fine, killing SCVs. So it's worth noting that the challenge in the minute micro practice map for killing SCVs is actually not always winnable. The SCV can move to a position on the building such that it cannot be attacked by the probe regardless of where the probe is and what method you're using to target it. Uh, if it does that, then you simply can't win the challenge in time. Uh, the episode itself is still useful because when the SCV is not sitting in that position, um, the techniques mentioned in the video are still the best way to target it. None of this is particularly relevant now because Blizzard has made it easier to click on the SCV. So this episode is more or less obsolete, but it made sense at the time. Uh, episode 20 on worker walls was fine, I think. Zergling surrounds. Uh, when I was making the Zergling surrounds episode, um, I had initially believed that Zergling surrounds were always universally good to do. When I was doing the testing for the episode that didn't reveal itself to be the case. Um, I would, you know, make a bunch of Zerglings against Adepts and I would surround the Adepts and I would do worse than just A-moving. Uh, so then I thought that maybe um, it's because it prevents the opponent from kiting and it's not just the fact that it gives you a surround faster, which was my initial impression. So then I made the uh, basic um, kiting AI and the kiting AI would just very consistently get out of my surround. And uh, again, surrounding actually hindered me rather than helping. Uh, I still don't know what's different between that and in a real game, because uh, in a real game, it does appear that surrounding is always beneficial against adepts, for example. So I'm not sure what is different in my tests that made this not the case but it resulted in me having to kind of cheat and use Hellions instead of just basic units because Hellions dealing um, splash damage in a line means they are particularly susceptible to being surrounded. I would have preferred to use a different scenario than Hellions, but I just couldn't find a way to make it actually demonstrate that surrounding is good, and so Hellions are used instead. Uh, surrounding Hellions is very powerful, and you definitely need to surround them to fight them, so it's not terrible, but I, I wanted to, I would prefer to make it a little bit more generic. 
Uh, episode 22 on magic boxing was fine. Um, some people have noted that because the Thor does so much splash damage now, magic boxing isn't terribly effective. You can still use it against Archons uh, as well. And Thor's splash damage is going to be nerfed in the next patch, um, which will be released in like a couple days. So magic boxing might again be useful against Thor's. That episode was fine. Uh, missile dodging pickups. I perhaps should have used a different example for this. Uh, maybe I should have used like a warp prism and immortal fighting a spine crawler, because that's very much focused on dodging the projectile, uh, and it's much easier to do and much more straightforward. Instead, the approach I took was a lot different, and it was mostly about predicting which unit is going to be shot, uh, which is based on you know just the positioning and everything. Um, it's uh, a lot harder to be very consistent with the uh, approach that I took compared to an immortal and a warp prism against a spine crawler, and really it's just an entirely different technique because um, just dodging a spine crawler shot, for example, is very much just about getting the timing right to dodge the projectile, whereas the uh, example that I used is mostly about predicting rather than reacting or timing. Because uh, it's about predicting which unit is going to be shot. So I probably should have made that into two episodes. Uh, and I might actually still just make another episode on the Immortal versus Spine with the Warp Prism example. Because it is very different. Uh, and then, given that, I should have at least phrased the other one differently. And I probably should have made the Immortal one first. And then made this one afterwards as like an addition to it. And then episode 24 on Worker Blocking was I think a good episode. It's worth noting that if you do it perfectly you can actually pass the challenge map by shift queuing a whole position. So you right click to like a pixel perfect location and then shift queue a whole position and that will actually consistently pass the level. Uh, that aside the technique shown in the video is by far better than attempting to do that because it allows you to move at full speed to where you need to be and then instantaneously stop. Whereas um, with whole position, you do still need to uh, decelerate. So the technique in the video is still good. The challenge was perhaps not tuned perfectly, but you, it takes a lot of trial and error to find the uh, exact pixel you have to move command to. So that's it for this. Um, I know this is not the usual episode of Minute Micro, and this is far more than one minute, but uh, there were some things in the previous episodes that I wanted to address and uh, the best way to do that is to make a video on it. So I hope you found this interesting. I can't say much of it was very helpful and uh, yeah, have a good day.